liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right, man. Yeah. How are you? Feeling like an old man. Feeling like an old man. <laughs> That's really all I can say today. This time you actually have an old man complaint, though. I do. <laughs> <laughs> mess oh, my, my back. Mess my back up today. Oh, my back. <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully I won't have to have any sudden stops during the podcast where I got to stand up and move it around. <laughs> if you hear some like weird jerking sound from the other side of the table, then, you know, it, yeah. it was Liberty Larry couldn't, got, couldn't handle it anymore. He had to stand up for a minute. It got to be too much. Knock the chair over. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't knock the mics off the table. That's yeah. that's the important thing. Yeah. 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 Don't want to be like, tearing up our protect equipment. Protect the valuable stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You're back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's already <laughs> Microphone. Caught. Yeah. Microphone's important. <laughs> right. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a whole lot of banter today, really, other than <laughs> making fun of you and your back. But I, I absolutely can empathize. Like, I have yeah. way more back problems than I would like to admit at in yeah. my mid 40s. Yeah. 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 It's, it, it's not like a constant problem for me, but it crops, it sticks its head out every now and then and reminds me. <laughs> yeah. I will say for myself that they started when I was in my teens, though. Oh, I would really? Get, yeah. I would get back spasms when I was in my oh, teens. Yeah, and I was yeah. like a real athlete back then. Yeah. Um, and it was usually when I was doing something like really athletic. It was like it would be in the, you know, the third week of basketball season or whatever. Yeah. And I, uh, I would have back spasms and be out for like a week. And no, uh, I hadn't really a few years ago, the back thing started sticking its head out every now and then. Mm-hmm. But up until then, I never had back problems at all. Yeah. So, but yeah, the past few years, it started to become a, a, a thing every now and then. Yeah. You know, what's funny is like some of those things have gone away. Like yeah. I used to have ankle problems too. Like oh, a, really? a, particularly yeah. like Achilles, like the back of your heel, you yeah. know, back of your ankle. Um, and I don't have those problems anymore. Well, that's good. I suppose it might mean that I'm not active enough. I'm, I'm <laughs> well. not sure. I mean, but you know, I, I, I get out and move around. I, yeah. Well, you work out and stuff like that. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you should be more running though, or something. Yeah. I don't know. I would like to get back out and like play basketball again. I miss that. Well, I'll say I played basketball yesterday. So or that, soccer or tennis or that, soccer tennis. Yeah, my back thing may be from playing basketball yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Although I, we didn't go that hard, yeah. but I mean we were playing. So <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about soccer tennis recently and how much I miss doing that after we go out drinking on Tuesdays. Oh, that like, was, you remember we used to like oh, we used yeah. to go out and like play some sports after yeah. we went drinking. We drink a pitcher of margaritas and go play some sports. Well, my and, biggest. <laughs> thing from soccer tennis was getting ran off the tennis court by the police yeah after he sat there and watched us for like 20 minutes and they right. came up and asked us what the hell we were doing what y'all, game is this yeah y'all aren't playing tennis <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was the reason he made us leave yeah yeah he was like you can't do that all here it's like we're not breaking anything man yeah. it's a form of tennis <laughs> right it's foot tennis <laughs> foot tennis <laughs> yeah didn't go over well no no but uh, you know, I guess we should we should thank him for letting us play for that extra twenty minutes while he was trying to figure out what was going on before he ran us off. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Always looking on the bright side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, trying. That's what that's what you can expect from the state. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of, I, actually, I think that we're gonna. I don't know. We're, we're, what are we gonna call this one? Just. Lies and more lies, or I don't know. I don't know what the episode title is going to be. I never do until the end. No, actually, yeah, we but, always do. It um, the end. I uh, I think I, I want to start with like, you know, back to the COVID stuff, and but it's not even so much that I, I you know, I think part of what like triggered this in me, um, besides hearing Deborah Burks go on, um, and we'll play that clip in a few minutes, is that um, just this. Uh, I don't know. I guess this government culture here in the United States uh, of just just continuing to repeat lies. Yeah. Um, that that they know are lies. Well, and there's never any accountability, mm-hmm. and they it's it always baffles me when I meet people, and and I meet people quite a bit that like really believe the propaganda mm-hmm. and on anything. And I'm not, I'm talking beyond COVID, like the wars, like you name the propaganda mm-hmm. and like people buy it and believe it. And I'm like, like they've lied to you like so many times. Mm-hmm. Like how do you still like believe anything they say? <laughs> well, I, you know, it's actually two things in a, in a discussion with my mom or I actually, was, I think it was separate discussions, but anyway, 
um, that kind of wanted to make me focus on this a little bit. And uh, one was just a couple of days ago, um, and we uh, we were discussing Julian Assange and our disagreements about what kind of what, person or what I don't know what, what should be the consequences of be, yeah yeah for Julian Assange. And I, and I was saying that uh, you know well what he did was he released information um, about. And actually, he just he just published. He wasn't even the lead. Like most yeah, of what we're did. talking about is the Chelsea Manning leaks, yeah. right? But um, you know that he just published information about the crimes of our government, and that I think we have. I wish more people would do that. I think we have every right to know what the government's doing in our name and with our money, especially when it's illegal. Absolutely. Um, and she didn't disagree with that particularly, but she was like, there should be some limitations in the cases where. Um, it could put other government employees at risk. That's always the argument I've heard, which I, I know we've talked about on this podcast before, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it, it is to me the okay, granted, I can, me personally, I would say that they, the government doesn't need any secrets at all. I don't think there should be much of a government anyway. Right. Um, but, but I can at least sympathize with the argument that as long as we have this government and mm -hmm. we have these people operating overseas, mm -hmm. that we don't want stuff released that's going to compromise those people. Yeah. Um, well, uh, but there's when some... you're talking about like in like with this Assange deal, where mm -hmm. like the government was actively doing stuff it shouldn't have been doing, mm -hmm. and that it knew it shouldn't be doing, right. and was covering it up. Mm -hmm. I just I, I have a hard time with anybody defending not releasing that information. Yeah. Well, but here's the other side of that is that there has never been any evidence that he put anybody at risk. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was kind of getting to. We've discussed on the podcast. The, mm -hmm. the truth of the matter is, is that, that nothing he released, as far as we can tell at least, mm -hmm. compromised anybody. Yeah. That's just kind of the blanket government lie. This is how to demonize him. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, so the question might be, well, why would they keep telling you this when there's no evidence for it? Well, that's because it. Because I mean, they don't to want... Him. Well, they... Because they don't want people to latch on to this. Yeah. And this is a way to keep people, this is a way to divide people from from being solidly in his corner. Mm -hmm. Because just people like your mom that think that, that what he did was wrong, when in reality, if you remove the lie, then they're like, well, yeah, absolutely that should have been released. Yeah. And, and think particularly about my family. Like she was married to a government agent for 50 years. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, yeah. The idea of putting a government agent at risk through your release of information, it like really hits home. Yeah. And, and I, I and absolutely with good reason. understand it. Like, yeah. I, and I, I'm all for that. But mm -hmm. like I say, that's, but the reason that the lie is out there is to, to add cover for the government. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, I would, I would certainly want to believe that my dad would be one of those people that if asked to do something illegal would have said absolutely not. Knowing your dad <laughs> as well as I did, I would think you're pretty confident. I yeah. feel pretty confident that he... He wouldn't. He wouldn't just be going going along with something that he didn't think was right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and I I, th I think that you're right too. But um, but it's a it's a legitimate concern. And the other thing is that with Assange particularly, the history of WikiLeaks, um, they were actually like very careful about scrubbing information before they released it yeah. in order to protect people. Yeah. Um. And then, of course, uh, you know anything that would have been released through um, through mainstream media uh, would have been checked. And as oh, yeah. I understand it now, and I, I couldn't, I, I was telling her this, but I, like when it came down to it, I couldn't provide specifics um, of how this works. But like, I mean, it just seems like it comes up regularly that um, that media outlets check with some government office before they release information these kind of this kind of information yeah um i mean it absolutely wouldn't surprise me given yeah. the the close ties yeah. that our media and government have at least mm -hmm. nowadays now that may not have been true in the 70s mm -hmm. or maybe it was i mean yeah. i don't know well at the time that the the wikileaks stuff went out um it was released it re was released by wikileaks uh, and once it was out there, though, 
like major media organizations absolutely jumped on the information. Oh, absolutely. There were like thousands of articles written based oh, yeah. on the information in the WikiLeaks. And, uh, <laughs> you know, of course, uh, I, I think that probably the thing that really put Julian Assange in trouble was the Vault 7 stuff. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the CIA's hacks and um, the information about how they could, uh, you know, uh, spy on us all through our various devices and... Um, and then of course how they could, uh, hack into other systems and then leave trails that would suggest that it was some other nations, <laughs> people that had done it and all that. I, I think, I think once he crossed the, the CIA in that way with like that kind of significant information, that was probably the end <laughs> of him. But, yeah. um, but anyway, there was that. And then, uh, and then we were discussing the Ukraine Russia thing and, uh, and she was telling me, you know, it doesn't bother her that we disagree about this stuff. But what bothers her is that it seems like in all of these things, um, I take the side against the United States. and The United what, States government. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, that's really the point to make is that, no, I, I think that I'm taking the side of the, the people yeah. of the United States, which frequently is against <laughs> the interests of the U.S. government. Yeah. Um, I don't think that the people of the United States have any interest in what's going on in Ukraine. No. Um, I would and, say, like, more the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, this is the our interest in Ukraine thus far has done nothing but hurt the U.S. economy. Yeah. Like, and, and the Ukrainians. And the Ukraine, well, and the Ukrainians in the end. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and, and in the end, we're all losing. Yeah. But um, particularly, and it's, you know, it's it's a weird thing when you talk about, especially like with the with the U.S. economy being hurt right now. What I think when people, a lot of people, when they hear that, they think, oh yeah, well, you're more worried about the economy than people's lives. That but is the people's truth lives. Truth is, is it is people's lives. Mm -hmm. Exactly the point I wanted to make. That, that yeah. when our economy is suffering the way it is now, and it's only projected to get worse, like that, those are people's lives. Yeah. If you have marginal, if you had marginal incomes a year ago, like if you were just getting by. Yeah, you're not right now. You're not getting by. Yeah, you're losing your house or losing your apartment or whatever, mm -hmm. or cars or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. and that's that's not just to be discounted and blown off. It, it breaks up families. It destroys people's health. Yep. There's a whole lot of consequences of this, and it, you know, a lot of it's the same kind of arguments. You know, getting back to the point, I suppose um, that I was making about lockdowns during the COVID regimes. Yeah. Um, is that, yeah, there's a whole bunch of additional consequences by shutting down people's lives, trapping them in their homes, ending their income streams, you know, et cetera, um, that this has some far reaching effects. Yeah. Um, and you know, we saw it in the, the rise in calls to suicide hotlines and the rise in, um, uh, alcohol and drug related deaths and, the rise in the one that really got me was the rise in um, uh, emergency room visits for uh, uh, child abuse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like there, there were a lot right. of things and domestic abuse of other kinds as well. But the, like yeah. the one that really got me was the child abuse thing. And, um, and I, I pointed out at the time that, you know, if when you, when you take your child to the emergency room due to child abuse, like, that doesn't happen lightly. That wasn't like I smacked the kid and, you know, and he yeah. cried and cried. Th yeah. This is like, I think I might have killed my child. Yeah. Like serious, serious. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's usually pretty severe injuries that prompt people to go to the emergency room when they inflicted the injury on their child. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, because there's other consequences. Right? Exactly. And they know that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, there are far-reaching consequences to this and... Um, the, the repetition of lies to, uh, to manipulate the behavior of the American people, it, it does so many things. And so, um, let's start with this recent clip from Deborah Burks on Fox news. And, uh, if you'll remember, it's like she was part of Trump's COVID team at the very beginning. Um, the lady with the scarves and uh -huh. so forth, okay. um, if you saw her on TV, but, uh, let's play this clip real quick and then we'll talk about some other related things. Um, and hopefully draw your attention to the uh, the way your government treats you. Right. <laughs> Here we go. 
I knew these vaccines were not going to protect against infection. And I think we overplayed the vaccines and it made people then worry that it's not going to protect against severe disease and hospitalization. There's like, you remember it was absolutely verboten to say that the vaccines Uh, wouldn't prevent infection. Yeah. I mean, we had a YouTube, one of our YouTube, one of our podcasts that was up on YouTube taken down because of that. I assume, I don't know. They weren't real specific about what it was. There were a number of things in there that they (laughs) might've taken it down for. Yeah. But that was was the, well, yeah, but, um, that was the hot thing at the time. Mm -hmm. And, and I mean, same thing with people on Twitter and all kinds of stuff. Like there was a full court press for this information not to get out. Yeah. Um, and so, but she's saying that like, and she was, she was out pretty early. Yeah. Like she wasn't a part of the, the government. Um, Biden, under Biden. Well, not under Biden. She didn't stay there under Trump. Yeah. Like oh, really? she, yeah. I, I don't think, I'm pretty sure that she was out pretty early. Maybe. I don't um, know. But, uh, which, I mean, just really goes to show, though, that they knew very early on. That what these uh, vaccines were capable of. Yeah, the limitations. What the limitations were, yeah. yeah. And, um, but they stood up there in front of the camera over and over and over and over and over again yeah. and said, you need to get this vaccine so that you can protect yourself and protect other people. You will not get sick if you get this vaccine. You cannot spread the disease if you get this vaccine. They clearly said that knowing that it was a lie. Yeah. And I know plenty of people that that was the reason they got it. Like yeah. they were very open with me about because I was Mr. Skeptical. Mm-hmm. And um, that was always the pushback I got in the beginning was, well, I want to take care of the people around me. I'm like, OK, but yeah, <laughs> we, I think feel like we know, knew pretty early on, too, that that was garbage. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, studies were coming out pretty quickly yeah. that suggested that it wasn't it wasn't really working. And there were a bunch of excuses at the time. Well, it had the vaccine hadn't had time to, to, to take effect before they got infected or, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, or, you know, of course one of my favorites and this one they maintain still is that, um, oh, well, but he didn't get as sick as he would have otherwise. It would have been so much worse. But well, you they, have no they, way Well, they kept that. calling them breakthrough cases. Yeah. Like, the the rate of breakthrough cases is still really low. Mm-hmm. Like, because I remember that being, like, the talking point for such a long time. Yeah. You know. So, and she doesn't say it here, but it to me, the implication was the reason that they were saying all this stuff is because they were concerned that people wouldn't believe that it had a positive effect on outcomes if you told them that they might still get sick and they could still spread it. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're knowingly, um, what was the, what was the term that they always used during the Trump stuff? They were, they were wittingly <laughs> lying to you. Yeah. Um, because they were concerned that if they told you the truth, you wouldn't follow the behavior that they had prescribed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have multiple instances. I saw actually on Dave Smith just recently, apparently yeah. Fauci made a comment on, uh, some show that he had never, um, promoted the, uh, shutdown of anything <laughs> during COVID. Like that Let's none of us were alive two years ago. Blatantly you know? lie. Yeah. Like it. Um, got you on camera all over the place yeah. talking about this. Well, and they played a clip of him in 2020 saying that in his meeting with the president, he had advocating shutting down the country. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. So, but you know, that's, that's an obvious lie. Um, he was on camera every day promoting the, the shutdown of something. Yeah. Um, but, but we still per, 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 put these people up and, mm-hmm. and, and people believe them. Yeah. And remember, he early on said uh, that masks weren't effective. The mask thing is just ridiculous which with him. Which actually is true, yeah. that, but accidentally true, yeah. that masks are not effective. Um, and then he came on later when, when pressed about that and said, well, um, I said that masks weren't effective because I was concerned that there would be a rush out to buy masks and there wouldn't be enough available for hospital workers. Yeah. All right. So there again, he's saying, well, I, I intentionally lied to you because I was concerned that your behavior wouldn't follow what I what we needed. Yeah. And then he admitted in The New York Times also that he had exaggerated um, the levels of uh, of either vaccination or natural immunity needed to reach herd immunity. Um, because he was concerned that if he gave the real numbers, that it would disincentivize people from going and getting the vaccine. Yeah, which is what he wants you to do. Yeah. 
So um, for whatever reason that I still don't feel like I understand. <laughs> I'm pretty confident that he has a financial interest. Well, he has a but financial we'll, interest. We'll yeah. never know. Yeah. And that at the end of the day, that's probably all it is. Like the mm-hmm. reason this was pushed so hard is because they needed everybody to get it because the government had already bought them. Yeah. Well, you know. yeah, that's that's certainly part of it too. Like, um, but actually, at that point, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it was already purchased, so the money had changed hands. It, it yeah, well, didn't it doesn't matter, matter to point. Pfizer and the the pharmaceutical companies, but it matters to the government. I don't know that it does. They spit the money already, and they well, it well, it, but it spending the money look, was the end. Yeah, but it could potentially still come back to bite whoever's in power if mm-hmm. it comes out later that all of these vaccines were bought and then none of them were taken or massive amounts of them were wasted. Yeah. Well, that's, um, I mean, we already know that that's, that's the case. That, yeah. Well, that's the case anyway. Um, and I don't think that there's a big, uh, um, uh, blowback from that there hasn't been but you've got to think in real time that they hell that, they just bought uh, however many million more. Yeah, right. <laughs> but you've got to think, though, at the time that that may have been something that was a concern for them, mm. that we don't want to that we don't want all these vaccines to just go to waste and then something come back later. Yeah. Even though that hasn't really happened. Yeah. Well, um, you know, the point, I, I guess the point to be made here is that your government is absolutely 100 percent and they've proven it over and over and over again willing to lie to you to get you to behave in a certain way. And you, you got to also think about what that means is that they felt like they had to lie to you to get you to do the right thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and what that suggests is that they don't trust you to make a good decision for yourself. Yeah. That they're treating you like a little child that just has no understanding and no knowledge and no real ability to choose for yourself what's best for you. And so they're choosing for you and, but they're doing it in a, in a deceitful way. Yeah. Uh, obviously they're, they're trying to manipulate you to behave in the way that, that they want. And that's what a whole lot of things that government does is about yeah. taxation. There's a huge part of taxation. That's just about manipulating behavior. Oh yeah. Like, like that's, <laughs> and they, you, op- you openly hear them talk about it all the time, like mm-hmm. raising the price of cigarettes, like yeah. that type of thing. And alcohol and, and what alcohol, have you. all of this yeah. stuff. Um, that's, and, and that's the reason they're trying to manipulate you into acting a certain way, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And then of course, you know, tax breaks for charitable donations and so forth. Again, you know, this time yeah. it's an incentive, but, um, to try and get you once again to behave in a certain way, let's use the tax code to try and manipulate people's behavior. Yeah. Um, let's use legislation to try and manipulate people's behavior. Let's use this legal system to try and manipulate people's behavior. Yeah. And I'm not saying that all of these things are bad things. Um, but the, I guess what it comes to here is that it's often done in a very deceitful way. Yeah. Well, my, my policy is when, when anytime the government makes a statement or a politician makes a statement, you just gotta, you gotta believe they're lying until they're proven they're not lying. Yeah. Like that's, that's the best take to have, like, Mm. but to just blindly believe everything that you hear coming out of the government is just crazy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, to to the point on the Ukraine thing. Now, okay, so part of it, like, I know that I'm kind of a contrarian. Um, yeah. But I, uh, you know, talking about being on the side of the American people, like, why do I argue the point? Why do I, um, why am I a whataboutist in the Russia-Ukraine thing? Like, yeah. you know, comparing how you know, people complain about Russia shutting down alternative media or, or um, uh, opposition media and me saying, well, yeah, Ukraine did too. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, talk I, about U S did too, by the way. Oh yeah. Well, like, absolutely. Just, let's just ro- not forget that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's actually probably the thing that I spend the most time on is that, you know, the, you said you saw somebody recently saying this is the first, uh, aggressive invasion of another yeah. country or something. Yeah. I can't remember. It was on PBS. It mm-hmm. wasn't the um. It wasn't like the News Hour. It was some show on PBS or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was a statement they made that this was the first that Russia committed the first act of 
aggression since like in 30 years or something. I don't remember exactly the quote. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. Like Libya didn't happen. Like Serbia well, yeah. didn't happen. Like yeah, uh, Iraq, uh, all of these things. Syria, like, yeah, Somalia. Like, them, but but the you, French it's like and like you ignore or, all, yeah. everything that the U.S. has done in that, mm-hmm. in that category. And other members of the EU, like well, said, yeah. like, a, like the French in Mali. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, it, hmm. So, and I guess I was listening to a uh, an interview with Glenn Greenwald. Um, actually, I, I listened to a couple of interviews with Glenn Greenwald uh, recently. I, I like him a lot. Um, I have some really strong disagreements with him about some things, but yeah. um, but I, I see him as a truth seeker and somebody who is an honest journalist. Yeah, who is willing yeah. to say the unpopular thing if that's where the information leads him. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, and he was talking about the same thing with the Russia Ukraine. And, um, he was saying, you know, I think that part of the reason that, okay, so for myself, um, why do I talk about this stuff and try and, it, it, you know, explain the Russian side and talk about the, the missteps that the U S has made, um, and how they're contributing to the war in, in such a way. And even point out things about how, um, you know, Ukraine is going to have to negotiate at some point and they should have done it three months ago when they had a better position. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, encouragement from <laughs> the U S and the UK is what prevented them from negotiating back then. Yeah. And so now they're in a worse position and this is partly our fault and, uh, you know, and so on. And, well, the, and, re- the reason we make such a big deal about that on this podcast, though, is because you're not getting this information from the mainstream media. Right. And that's my point, all. is that I think that it's in the interest of the American people to know these things. Yeah. I um, mean, at least to be able to make an informed decision. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe the majority of people in this country, given all of the legit information, would be like, yeah, we need to sacrifice our economy mm-hmm. to go help Ukraine. Well, how about now, sacrifice- I doubt it. Yeah. How about sacrificing our people? Well, that, and and yeah. there and then there's of course the potential of sacrificing whole cities. Oh yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, it's a it's a nuclear power, but um, and I don't think it is in the American people's interest. But no. it is in the interest of a lot of people in Washington and those connected with them. Oh, absolutely. Um, because this is a huge money maker for a lot of people. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, but Greenwald was saying. Um, you know, why do I point out um, where the U.S. has done these same kind of things that we're now vilifying Russia for? Well, because I don't have any control over the Russian government. Yeah. I don't have any input. I don't have a platform there. I don't have any say. Nobody's listening to me in Russia. That's probably not true, Glenn Greenwald, but <laughs> y- you but get his point. The point's well taken. Yeah. Um, I can affect my government. Yeah. Like, I can't stop the Russian government from being terrible, but I might be able to have some influence on stopping my government from the U.S. government from being terrible. Yeah. This is my own government, supposed yeah. to be ran by the people of this country. <laughs> yeah, so why am I critical of the U.S. government more so than I am of the Russian government or the Ukrainian government, for that matter? Because the U.S. government is my government. Yeah, it's speaking for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And using my resources. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. And, um, uh, you know, along that same line, if you're ready to transition sure. um, here, uh, there, you know what, let's just play the clip. This is on the, the Second Amendment or the gun, what, gun restrictions, gun, I don't know, whatever, bill. Yeah. Um, Some the, gun bill in Congress. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Man, that sounds, makes us sound so, like, unprepared for this, but, um, but anyway, uh, this is a um, yeah. This is just a, a little back and forth that went on uh, in the debate about this bill, and I, I find this like really enlightening for a number of reasons. So here it goes. I would like to yield to anyone on the other side who would dispute that this bill bans weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Would the gentleman yield? I would if, to, to, if for an answer to that question. Yeah, that's the point of the bill. So, so you mean you? So to clarify, Mr. Chairman, you're saying it is the point of the bill to ban weapons that are in common use in the United States today. Yes, the problem uh, is if the gentleman will yield. Okay, I can't remember the name of the guy asking the question. The guy responding is Jerry Nadler, though. Okay, all right. Um, and there's a reason that the that the Republican asked that question in the way that he did, saying, you know, is it is anyone going to dispute that this bill will ban guns that are in common use in the United States today? All right. 
that phrasing is important um, because it, it's out of the DC versus Heller Supreme Court decision from many, many years ago, from decades ago, um, where the su Supreme Court um, issued an opinion that the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, yeah. um, protects ownership and possession of firearms that are in common use for lawful purposes, including self-defense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so they, they also used this uh, recently in the, the strike down of the New York law, yeah. which I, I think I mentioned at the time that I, you know, I, there is a historical precedent for cities and townships restricting carrying firearms, you know, within city limits and so forth. Um, and so I, I, I would say that I'm not exactly th thrilled about the decision, um, but I do think that it... I, my understanding of the New York issue was really more, I'm getting off track here, but um, was really that it was more about um, that they were preventing people from owning. Yeah. And that, that's that been my understanding is not only, because it's one thing to just not issue carry permits, because that mm -hmm. would be more in line with what you're saying. Yeah. That, you know, municipalities have the right to tell you, well, you can't carry a gun around here. Mm -hmm. But it's a different thing to say, well, you can't own a gun around here. Yeah. And that's what they were saying in New York yeah. is you can't even own one, yeah. much less carry one. Right. And so this decision um, by the Supreme Court protects ownership and possession. Yeah. Yeah. Not, it Not doesn't carry. protect the right to carry around on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, and then there was a, a second decision later that was McDonald versus Chicago that reaffirmed the opinion in the D.C. Heller um, case and uh, established it as a nationwide principle. Yeah. Right? So, um, and it's so so guns defined as in um, what is it? Common use. Yeah. The, yeah. Uh, firearms that are in common use in the United States for lawful purposes. Yeah. Which includes self defense. Can't be banned. C can't be banned. Yeah. And right. so this person's saying, yeah, we're, we're completely yeah. disregarding that. I mean, like to take it back to its root, so the Second Amendment, what the, the D.C. versus Heller opinion states is that the, um, the right of American citizens to bear arms of, of, of any kind of firearm that is in common use for lawful purposes in the U.S., which includes self-defense, may not be infringed. There you go. <laughs> and, and it goes to your point. That's the reason he phrased it the way he did. Right. Um, and so Nadler says outright that the purpose of the bill is to ban firearms in common use. And even, like, there's a lot of people talking at the very end of that, but if, if you listen close, you can hear him say, um, that's the problem is that they're in common use. Yeah, yeah. But... What he's actually saying is that, well, we're proposing legislation to legislate away one of the amendments to the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think he's going the wrong direction. <laughs> he needs to, we need a constitutional convention or whatever. Yeah. Well, and then. Like, I mean, if you want to do this correctly, that's, mm -hmm. that's what it would take. Yeah. You would need to have another amendment nullifying the Second Amendment. Yeah. And it would require – so here would be the argument against that, that they yeah. would make, I suspect. Okay. Um, is that, well, in order to get an amendment to the Constitution passed, you need it to pass three-quarters of the um, state legislatures. It needs to be approved by three-quarters of the state legislatures, and that's mm. really hard. Yeah. Well, there's a reason that's really hard would be my retort to that. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, the, it was, the, was never intended to be easy to take people's rights away. It, it was should never, intended, never be easy it, to take It's beyond that even. It's, it was never intended to be easy to give more power to the federal government. Well, yeah, that's actually a better way of <laughs> stating it. But you're right. Like yeah. that's, you know, this that's not supposed to be an easy thing to do. Right. Um, but... And so, that, like, like I said, I find this enlightening in a number of ways. Um, one is obviously that they have a complete disregard for what for the constitutional basis or what the people of this country want. Of the because government, because the of this truth country. is, is if the people of this country wanted that, then it wouldn't be hard to get it through that those legislatures. Mm -hmm. I mean, if that's what the people wanted, the people would elect politicians that would do it, and there we would sit. Yeah, it, it, even uh, even deeper than that. Again, um, if the people wanted that, you wouldn't need to do it at the federal level. Well, that's true too. Yeah. 
Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it would be well, done at state and local. And that's the problem levels. with federal government anyway, is like the place, the areas that want to do these things go should be able to go do them. Mm -hmm. It's when you want to force those ideas on people who don't want them, yeah. the problem comes in. Well, and the, um, the federal government was meant to be uh, outward facing. Yeah. Um, the, you know, the design of, well, I mean, this has all fallen completely apart in this country, but, um, and at, at least since the civil war, yeah. right. Um, but initially like the st independent states, all these states, these 50 states yeah. uh, of the union were supposed to be independent polities. Yeah. Um, and they were supposed to be independent polities that had a, uh, a federal, um, branch essentially that was outward facing so that they could negotiate together with the rest of the world. Yeah. It, and that was supposed to be the role of the federal, the federal government. And it was supposed to be, um, like the executive was the figurehead essentially. Um, and the, you had the house of representatives that represented the people that were popularly elected from the various districts um, you know, representatives were elected popularly from the various districts to represent those people, their constituents at the, to the federal government. Yeah. Um, and the Senate was supposed to represent the states, like yeah. the states as independent states. Yeah. Um, so each state had two senators to go represented at the federal level. Which is the reason they were appointed and not voted on by the people. Right. They weren't popularly elected at the beginning. They were, yeah. uh, they were selected in whatever way the state legislatures chose. Yeah. Right. Um, and then the executive, uh, <laughs> was, um, was elected as a, through a representative in a representative Republic where the people voted, the representatives took those votes into consideration essentially, yeah. um, and sent electors actually that, that cast the ballots. Um, and the electors weren't beholden to the votes of the people actually yeah. for the president. But then the president's job was supposed to be essentially the chief diplomat of the United States. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And, uh, and the, the, um, amount of power that the federal government was supposed to have was supposed to be very limited. And certainly in the day to day lives of Americans, they were supposed to have essentially no power at all. Yeah. Um, and the only thing that the, at the state level, really that the, um, that the federal government, uh, that the constitution guarantees is that there will be a Republican form of government at the yeah. state level. Yeah. But actually that bill of rights doesn't yeah. apply to the states. Yeah. Not technically. Yeah. Um, the, it, it applies only to the federal government. So the states can ignore that. Although I think that most people would move to another state yeah. <laughs> if, <laughs> if their state was ignoring the bill of rights. Yeah. I think, um, certainly in this state, the Bill of Rights is enshrined in the state constitution as well. It's probably true in most, yeah. most states. Um, and, uh, and, but this has been completely turned upside down where everything is, is legislated at the federal level now. Like, um, you heard the expression, well, let's not make a federal case out of it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Like that, that was used way back because there were very few things that were federal issues, but now everything's a federal issue. It's a completely meaningless statement now. Yeah. Um, and, uh, <laughs> Again, I've gotten off track um, a little bit, but I, I think I guess the point that I want to make here is that the, the they're not concerned like these people that we've sent to Washington. Um, they're they're not concerned with the roots of the government in this country. Um, they're sure as hell not concerned with natural rights or or even rights as gu as guaranteed in the Constitution. Yeah. They feel like they can legislate around it. They don't think that the Constitution is the law of the land, as it were. Yeah. Um, they think that they can ignore it, and they have been for a very long time. Yeah. Um, and they can legislate around it and completely ignore it. And um, and then they all they use all the apparatus of government only to their benefit. So. Um, well, yeah, against the people. Yeah. And, you know, think about how, um, how crazy the Democrats went after the, uh, the Dobbs decision that, that, um, 
I'm going to use the common parlance, I guess, just say that repealed Roe v. Wade um, or overturned Roe v. Wade. That's how they're saying it, right? And uh, how um, livid they were and how they were kept resting on Supreme Court precedent. Well, this is a settled matter by the Supreme Court. It was settled by the Supreme Court 50 years ago. This precedent is important. They're overturning precedent. How dare they overturn precedent? Yeah. But he's not concerned about the D.C. versus Heller precedent. Exactly. It's only when it's convenient. Right. I mean, that's what it boils down to. So. Okay. I think I've ran it on that long enough. Yeah. Well, I don't have, I don't, I just don't have anything else to say for it. I, it's just, it, it amazes to me that we tolerate this. Yeah. And, and this kind of thing is the reason that I, uh, that I have no problem with secession. Yeah. Um, and, and just to, I think I, we, you know, we talked about this in the, our episode after the 4th of July. Remember that the most important secession that occurred in this country was when we seceded from the, uh, from Great Britain. Yeah. Yeah. That's when we became the United States of, well, no, we didn't come the United States of America, but immediately, yeah. but when the <laughs> colonies, um, seceded from Great Britain was the first big secession in this country. And it was probably one of the most important secessions in the history of the world. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, a government was set up that was supposed to be a voluntarist kind of government. Yeah. And it quickly became not that. Um, and then it was established, uh, essentially through, through force of might, um, in the civil war that you can have this government imposed upon you, even if you don't want it. Yeah. That yeah. you cannot leave. Yeah. That this is a contract that you didn't sign to enter, but you can't leave. Oh, exactly. Um, Which, like I say, is and that, but that that's what we need is to roll, somehow the big government's got to be rolled back. Mm-hmm. Like, and whether it's through the states leaving on their own or something, something's got to give here because we're absolutely at a breaking point. Yeah. And if you, again, like my mom was saying that she didn't want secession, that this, you know, which, which, which I, I understand. But um, what I would, what I said to her and, um, and it's, I think that she agreed, um, was that, well, you know, secession isn't the only option, but what we, what we need is radical decentralization. Yeah. yeah. That power has to be dispersed. Um, that it can't the rest reason, in the central government. That's the reason politics are, is so is as divisive as it is, mm-hmm. is because there's so much concentrated power, and this country is so big, and every four years, one side gets to rule over the other side. Yeah. Um, and that's the problem. Like, if you, if you can roll back the scale of the federal government, you can alleviate some of this divisiveness and just ugliness with our politics. Yeah. Like that's the reason politics are as ugly as they are. This, this Leviathan that has grown out of the federal government, it would be, um, a complete disaster to the, uh, to the founding fathers of this country. Oh, they wouldn't Um, recognize this country. They, they created this government to be the smallest in world history. And as, as Dave Smith, um, said, you know, and it's become the largest yeah. and just like, I was reading, uh, an essay, um, by Voltaire de Clare, um, a couple of days ago. And, uh, and she was talking about how, um, <laughs> how the founding fathers would be rolling in their graves about, uh, the situation at the time, which was something like, um, 90,000, uh, government employees, and it was about to be another ninety thousand, and they were spending one point six three billion dollars a year um, <coughs> from the federal government. And I'm like, hey, look now, there are three million federal government employees. Three yeah. million—that's one percent of the total population of this country—is yeah. uh, is employed by the federal government. Um, the federal government represents something like forty percent of GDP, uh, where it used to be less than one. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the federal government now spends, I mean, all right. So the last couple of years have hopefully been aberrations. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, even before COVID and so forth, the, the federal government was spending about four and a half trillion dollars a year. Yeah. Um, of course the last couple of years it's been more like six and a half trillion dollars a year. Um, uh, this is obscene. 
Yeah, yeah. And, and we well, don't and need it's all not, this. And it's not sustainable. I mean, that's that's the at the end of the day, it's just not sustainable. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're not bringing in that much revenue. Oh, right? no, no, no. no. <laughs> like, how many businesses can spin like that and not have the revenue to support it? Yeah. Of course, those businesses don't own the printing press. Right. So, which is, once again, the reason we're feeling the pain we are right now with inflation, mm-hmm. which I'm just saying, I work in retail. I mean, everybody knows it, though. It doesn't matter. The prices are going up on everything. Um, I mean, I, I just... I don't know. We're, we're definitely at some kind of tipping point here, and I don't know where it goes or how it ends, but none of these are good paths to be on right now. Yeah. Well, uh, the, the, positive, um, the positive side for us is that a lot of people are now recognizing that these problems arise out of the actions of the federal government. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are realizing that they can't trust the government, that they can't trust the mainstream media. Yeah. That these people have lied to you over and over and over again, um, as we're pointing out tonight. Yeah. Um, just on even on simple things, but yeah. that the that they're perfectly content with lying to you, that they have no respect for you whatsoever. It makes me think of the the line in Fight Club, um, where he's saying, uh, you know, maybe what you have to accept is that, uh, and he's talking about God. Um, but we'll apply it to the, to the government. Yeah. It's like, maybe you just have to accept the idea that the government doesn't like you, Yeah. that it yeah. never wanted you <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and yeah. that it's actively working against you. Yeah. Yeah. And, and in so many ways, that's just the case. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, radical decentralization seems to me the only option, um, from here, we certainly can't. Every time they accumulate power, it's freedom lost. Yeah. And you, you got to decide somewhere along the way who has the better idea of how to live your life, yourself or the federal government yeah. or any government. It any doesn't have to be federal yeah. government. But um, and, and I hope that you look at things and say, you know, I can make my own decisions. I can choose for myself what's best for me. Absolutely. And I don't need somebody, some, you know, big entity limiting those choices. Yeah. Yeah. Especially everybody's different, man. Like, and like you want to talk about like diversity and things like that. Like the government's the antithesis of that. Mm -hmm. Like they, they, it's the opposite. It wants everybody in line. Right. And, and that's, that's just not how people are, man. Mm -hmm. It's, it's in the nature of government to grow and accumulate power and yeah. fend for itself and itself alone. And the press. Yeah. I mean, we have one of the biggest prison population. The freest country in the world has one of the largest prison populations on the planet. Mm-hmm. Like, justify that. Like, I mean. Drugs, man. We can't let people do drugs. And, and that's a large part of what it is. Mm-hmm. Like, that's. And, and once again, like. Free people ought to be able to make decisions about their own bodies, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> Except when it comes to vaccines. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously. <laughs> obviously, right, yeah. yeah. Um, well, it doesn't matter because they'll just lie to you to get you to make the choice that they want the, you to the, anyway. That they want you to make, yeah. And on that happy note. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, like, like I said, there's hope for the future. I, I think that there's... Well, I think... I think we're head. I think there's potential for us to be heading to a good place. And mm-hmm. and I talked earlier about like we're at a tipping point here, and because we are like things things are pretty bad right now economically in the world. Like you look around, there's a lot of bad stuff going on. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you have to go through that to get to the good. Yeah. And, and I do think that that we are seeing on some level a cultural shift of just like what you're saying, lack of trust for the government, you know, that type of thing. Mm-hmm. And, and that is a good thing. Like that, mm-hmm. that has the potential to move us in a more positive direction. Yeah. Um, and I, I hope that's the direction we're heading. And because, any of that seems appealing to you, look at the Libertarian Party. Yeah. I mean, I have advocated for a long time that you find a party. There, there are more than just two parties in this country. That you go find a country that or a party that aligns with your beliefs, yeah, with your your paradigm, your worldview, your um, ideology, and that that's and you try and support that, and quit looking at elections as being a horse race that you want to try and pick the winner. Like 
no, choose what you think is best for you. Yeah. Um, I remember discussing with my aunt years ago, and, and she uh, has been a lifelong Democrat and um, and hated Hillary Clinton. Yeah. But she voted for Hillary Clinton. Um, because of that D. Yeah, because of that D. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, well, but she didn't, like, Hillary Clinton doesn't even align with your ideology. Like, why yeah. didn't you vote? Um, what was the... Uh, was it the Green Party? Yeah, it was the Green Party. I was trying yeah, to think was, of the name of the lady that was running that was year. Was it Jill Stein? Yes, yes, yeah. that's who it was. I was like, uh, you know, what do you know about Jill Stein? She was like, oh, I really like her. I was like, well, why didn't you vote for her? Yeah, yeah, right? Like, it, it always baffles me that that people want to, I, I don't know. I You got to vote your conscience. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever that may be, like, maybe that is the Republican in, in some cycles or the Democrat in some cycles. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's plenty, there are a handful of Republicans that if they ran, they have a chance of getting my vote. Yeah. I mean, Rand Paul's one of them. Yeah. I would have voted for Tulsi Gabbard in the last election if Honestly, she had been the Democrat candidate. Honestly, if she had been the Democrat candidate, hands down, I would have voted for her. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I would have. Um, I don't agree with her on everything, but I agree with her on enough. Yeah. I don't know? agree with her on most, most things, but I agree with her on the more than issue. most on the biggest issue to me. Yeah. I no. mean, she's still like a terror war person, but at least she was opposed to fighting the at war for it, terrorism. Yeah, yeah. At least it was a, a push in the right direction. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, and she put it first and foremost, which I really appreciated. Yeah. Um, so, and this is, you know, somebody in my office said to me, um, that they would vote for Liz Cheney before they would vote for Donald Trump. Wow. Now, um, this, is, <laughs> this is a person who's... Sounds uh, like we have some derangement who's here. definitely on the left. I mean, like... Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I was like, why in the world? What it, does like, Liz Cheney have to offer other than... Because I'm Donald Trump, Trump is, yeah, that's it. Actually, Donald Trump yeah. is evil as far as she's concerned. Yeah, I'm like I, just, I don't, you know, there's no sure. argument. I, that I'll point. grant that he's evil. I just don't think he's any more he's evil not than a any of the rest. Evil. Yeah, he's, exactly. He's just evil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like I don't know how you compare that with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, like, well, I would consider Hillary Clinton. A unique evil. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But, but, you know, Liz Cheney, I, and so we talked a minute about Ron DeSantis because there's those um, signs up here that oh, yeah, say uh, that. Ron DeSantis uh, for president 2024, Trump without the crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and I had made the point, she was like, well, I don't like him. I didn't expect it to. Yeah. I was like, well, I don't like him either. Yeah. Um, I, I, I said, you know, he was, he was good on one issue. Yeah. And she wouldn't agree with me on that. But um, <laughs> oh, yeah. you know, he's good on one issue. And other than that, he's he's a Republican. Yeah. And he's a Republican that believes in the war state and the surveillance state and the police state and all of these things that I'm absolutely 100% opposed to. And I said, I would rather have Trump than DeSantis just for that reason. Yeah. That at least, you know, Trump didn't actually accomplish ending any of that stuff. But, but at least he was skeptical yeah. At least he had misgivings about our military adventurism, yeah. um, at, which is more than I can say for DeSantis. And that's the most important thing to me for a president. Oh, absolutely. Because, so, I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the one thing they've got, at least under our government, the way it stands right now. That's something they've got control over. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, like, An absolute uh, yeah, exactly. Mm. I mean, it shouldn't be that way, but no. that is the case. Mm. And and like you can say what you want about Biden. I've got all kinds of problems with him, but Biden doesn't control this economy right now. No, like, I mean, he there's nothing he can do, and there's nothing any president can do directly to control the economy. Well, but they can directly control the military. Yeah, I mean, he he certainly had some. I mean, it started with Trump, um, but uh, Biden has certainly made some decisions that have made things worse. Yeah. Oh yeah, as far as the economy goes, I mean, yeah. they, I would, I would say that the president he has, can't snap his fingers. There's not like no. something that he can go out and do to fix it. No, I mean, but there's certainly things that he does have control over again um, yeah. that could go a long way. Oh, he yeah. could loosen up his restrictions on fossil fuels. Um, he could uh, stop the sanctions on Russia. Yeah, um, he could stop the sanctions on Iran. He could stop the sanctions on Venezuela. 
Yeah. Yeah. Like make the, well, making the country freer Mm -hmm. would help this economy. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's, yeah. That, but those, to me, those are still indirect controls, though. Like, you could, you, you kind of pull those levers and you don't have real control over what happens after you do. Yeah. It doesn't happen immediately. Like, changes occur over time. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the military, that's a different story. Mm -hmm. Like, the president could decide tomorrow he won't start bringing soldiers home. Here they come. Yeah. You know. Well, <laughs> I don't know. We well, presumably, it, yeah, presumably, we yeah. Um, I mean, you had Trump I, that uh, want, that pulled everybody out of Syria, and unbeknownst and, to him, apparently, we left soldiers in Syria because they just didn't tell him. Yeah, exactly. So you got to think some of that's just his ignorance, though. Well, yeah, on some level. Well, and then that's you know something that I said to the girl at work too. Uh, I said, you know, at least I, like he didn't have the knowledge um, to, or or maybe the intelligence too, but certainly not the knowledge to hire the right people to get the things done that he wanted to get done. Um, He didn't have the knowledge to defend his position as to why we should get out of these places. Um, So he was, he was easily manipulated into things like withdrawing from the open skies treaty, withdrawing from um, the JCPOA. Yeah. Things that made us significantly less safe. Like, that um, that nuclear treaty with Russia, yeah. like us not being a part of that anymore, is part of the reason we're in the situation we are right now with Russia and Ukraine. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it is a contributing factor. Yeah. Um, a so, scary contributing factor. Yeah, because they can't they can't confirm through um, uh, spy planes essentially through yeah. observation yeah. Um, that we don't have nuclear missiles on those missile platforms that are in neighboring countries. Yeah. This is a problem for them. (laughs) Right. Imagine they're a little concerned about that. (laughs) Um, so I don't know. Here we are. Uh, and I I think you said it right a minute ago, like things would be greatly improved in this country with more freedom. And that's kind of what we're trying to do on this podcast is make that case. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, just think if we had a president that really embraced freedom and really just started opening up markets and, and rolling back government. Mm-hmm. Like, you couldn't have a recession in those, at least immediately in those envi- in that environment. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it, would, it may take a few years because, like you say, you're not flipping a switch. <laughs> well, there's some other things that might happen, too, because, uh, again, doesn't have the complete control, like, oh, yeah. especially if they're rolling back legislation. I mean, just think of something like in the Fed. You say, yeah. well, okay, you couldn't have a recession. Well, actually, you probably would if well, you're yeah. coming from a situation like we're in right now yeah. where interest rates have been held close to zero for all this time, yeah. and um, now there's no Fed to regulate that. You now have and, free market interest rates. Yeah, and yeah. so the banks raised their interest rates because they needed to long ago, but they weren't allowed to. Yeah. Um, and now you do have a competitive market, so interest rates wouldn't just climb out of control Yeah. Um, because but the, they each would, bank but wants But they to, would have to go up. Though. Yeah, but each bank wants to beat the other bank right yeah. like you know yeah. but it also uh would incentivize saving and those yeah. are people who had saved would suddenly be doing a lot better too well, exactly. um so uh, it, it, you know it's hard to say i guess what would happen yeah. um we know that from right here one of the things that would improve the economy in the long run yeah would be a rise in interest rates yeah but the immediate effect the immediate of a rise in interest rates maybe a little tough yeah a little, a little bit of that medicine we were talking about there. right <laughs> so um, well, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm hoping, I, I think that political, uh, revolutions happen very quickly. And, um, you know, the Republican party that won for the first time, uh, at a national level with Abraham Lincoln had only existed for like 15 years yeah. when he was elected, um, yeah. president. So I, I'm hoping that we're, that we're on the verge of another one of those and that, people start looking seriously at parties like the libertarian party or the constitutional party or well, constitution party. What's it called? Anyway, know. um, you know, at, at parties that, at alternatives that have, don't have a track record of destroying this nation. Like the two major parties do. <laughs> well, I think people are going to be forced in one way or another to take a look at the libertarian party in the next few years. Mm-hmm. I think that the, that our voice is going to be out there in a strong, powerful way. And and we'll see what happens. Yeah. Like, I mean, the chips will fall where they may. Mm-hmm. But but at least I, I can say this with certainty, that the Libertarian Party now is a party that I'm very proud of. 
Yeah. That, that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the direction that's going and the message that's going to come out of it. Yeah. Um, I, agree, I agree with that um, to some extent. And uh, the other thing that I would add is just everybody should read Lysander Spooner. Yeah. Yeah. If more people did, we'd live in a better <laughs> place. Yeah. <laughs> And it'll improve your life anyway. He's, yeah. he's fun. Um, all right. Well, uh, <laughs> I guess all our, <laughs> all our banter came at the end, I suppose, but it was political banter. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've got like four lines of notes, and we passed those like half an hour ago. <laughs> nice. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, we're, we're doing really well right now. I probably shouldn't have said that, but we, we've been here Weeks in a row. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. And uh, and we're planning to keep doing that. So, um, you know. Uh, hey, I'll say this. I looked at our iTunes thing the other day, mm-hmm. and we're classified as a weekly podcast. Oh, nice. So <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that's not something we programmed in. Yeah, I don't think, I don't remember uh, putting that it in. It looked like something that, like, they just kind of generated there. Yeah. So. Nice. Uh, because the other thing that I saw that was generated there that I felt like they generated was our rating is clean. So we are a clean weekly podcast. Nice. So, yeah. So we can start cursing now. <laughs> <and then. laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> I'm sure those ratings adjust over time. So <laughs> That would make things so much easier that I didn't have to self-censor. All right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so uh, between now and the next time we're on, which yeah. we expect to be next week, uh, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Um, like and share, comment, uh, tell your friends, um, all that stuff. Uh, ratings, ratings are good too. Um, you can always email me at michael at thelibertymike.com uh, if you have any suggestions for topics or you just have some questions or you want to argue with me or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he I, likes to argue. I'm I'm available. <laughs> You better come with it, though. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, going come, come correct. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and we'll uh, we'll be back here next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.